Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, well, we are here. It's a little, a uh, little hectic this morning. You'll notice Bill is in here, and he ran into a little bit of a hitch, literally, <laughs> um, today. So he's not here, but I just. Uh, wanted to just really thank Patty for being willing to jump in. Valerie, I just grabbed her in the parking lot, so uh, she's just jumping in today, and I just appreciate that so much. So it's all good for the moment. Everything's good. So uh, I'm glad that you're here, and I'm glad that you're watching from home, wherever you are, and I just invite you to just get yourself in the mode and the attitude of worship. Here we are in the last Sunday of May. Where did the month of May go, in my opinion, because I don't know. But here we are in the last Sunday of the month of May, the Sunday after Pentecost, the Sunday before the national holiday of Memorial Day tomorrow. Today we see the faith journey of a man named Nicodemus. Now we talked about him a number of weeks ago, uh, but he's back in our scripture again today. Uh, he's sort of now we sort of see him kind of sorting out what he believes and and looking at his own journey of faith and seeing if our journey of faith might fit somewhere uh, along those same lines so that's uh, that's where we'll be today so again welcome to all of you who are here to worship know that God is present with us in this place and wherever you are as you prepare your hearts for worship I invite you to stand as we call ourselves to worship and join in our call to worship that's printed on the screen, followed by our opening hymn, Blessed Assurance. Let's stand together. Great is the Lord. God's greatness is beyond our understanding. Yet God has been revealed in Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, we have come to know the absolute love of God, Lift up your hearts and praise the Lord. May God continue to bless God's people with peace. Amen. Blessed assurance.
before we uh, enter into our, our time of prayer today, I wanted to share um, a poem so that as we think about our, our national holiday today, we th or this weekend, we think about um, in the history of our country, Memorial Day being, of course, for those who have lost their lives in service to our country. Um, but I also wanted to think today, I, I feel like I was pushed to think about, you know, that this has been a, a terrible year in our country for a lot of other reasons, too. And um, to just spend some time thinking about uh, the number of people who have lost their lives uh, to the COVID uh, pandemic, to the effects of it. Nearly 600,000 people in our country uh, have lost their lives to COVID or the effects thereof. Um, I think about people who have died unnecessarily, African Americans who have been who have died unnecessarily, uh, others who have um, sacrificed a lot for uh, for just their uh, ability to live. And so, I, before I, I open into our prayer, I wanted to share a poem, um, and it is a poem written by two Jewish rabbis, Rabbi Sylvan Camerons and Rabbi Jack Reimer. And it's a poem called, We Remember Them. And so I just want to share that. Just bring back to mind those that I mentioned, maybe people in your life, life that you are thinking about, that you're remembering today uh, on this day. So we'll be in a thought and an attitude of prayer as I read this poem to you. And then uh, we'll join together in our morning prayer. It's called, We Remember Them. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of buds and the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of leaves and the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. We have joys we yearn to share. We remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us, and we remember them. We remember them by Rabbi, Rabbi Sylvan Cameron and Rabbi Jack Reamer. Let's join together in prayer. Eternal God, we spend our lives sometimes in forgetfulness because life sends us so many things to think about, and sometimes we get overwhelmed. And yet today we remember. Tomorrow in our country, we remember. Today we're gathered in a church or in our sanctuaries at home. And we gather around a table of remembrance and symbols of memory. Slow us down, Eternal One. Focus our hearts and minds so that we may accomplish the aims of this hour. Compassionate One, this Memorial Day holds a special poignancy for us. The veterans of the Second World War, perhaps our fathers or grandfathers, sacrificed for their generation. We live in a world that they made. Their hair is white, their limbs bent with age, many are gone. But this Memorial Day is poignant, not only with the memories of wars past, but because our nation is at war again, with ourselves this time with a virus, with tension among races, with anger and division. Today, we remember those whose lives have been disrupted or taken from them. 
loving one, we pray for peace. We pray for peace in the world. We pray for peace in our nation. We pray for peace in our city, where children play in the parks and people greet each other on the street. We pray for peace in our families, loving one. Because all too often we forget to love. And we pray for peace in our own hearts. God of life, we turn our hearts and minds to you, for in you we live and move and have our being. We know that you forget not even one sparrow, and for that and for you a thousand years are but a watch in the night. And we know that when we forget, you remember. Help us to shape and make a world where we will lay down the arms of war and turn our swords into plowshares for a harvest of justice and peace. And we ask that you hear our prayers this day, Lord, and we look for your answer. Continue to listen to us as we offer to you the prayer that you taught us as we pray it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So we'll look at our scripture lessons for today. If you happen to bring your Bibles with you, we're going to be looking at Psalm 29 today. We're going to be looking at the third chapter of the Gospel of John. But for now, we'll look at Psalm 29, a mighty psalm of praise. And it reads like this. Give honor to the Lord, you angels. Give honor to the Lord for his glory and strength. Give honor to the Lord for the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord echoes above the sea. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty sea. The voice of the Lord is powerful, and the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord splits the mighty cedars. The Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon's mountains skip like a calf and Mount Hermon to leap like a young bull. The voice of the Lord strikes with lightning bolts. The voice of the Lord makes the desert quake. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists mighty oaks and strips the forest bare in his temples. Everyone shouts, glory. The Lord rules over the floodwaters. The Lord reigns as king forever. The Lord gives his people strength. The Lord blesses them with peace. You can almost see people singing or saying that piece of scripture together. And then our gospel lesson today that we'll talk about a little bit more in depth is from the third chapter of the Gospel of John, verses 1 through 17. And it reads like this. After dark one evening. Now, after dark is, uh, is, is important. After dark one evening, a Jewish religious leader named Nicodemus, a Pharisee, came to speak with Jesus. Teacher, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are proof enough that God is with you. Jesus replied, I assure you that our, unless you are born again, you can never see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, the truth is, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives new life from heaven. 
So don't be surprised at my statement that you must be born again. Just as you can hear the wind, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it goes, so you can't explain how people are born in the Spirit. What do you mean? Nicodemus asked again. Jesus replied, you are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, I'm telling you what we, what we know and what we've seen, and yet you won't believe us. But if you don't even believe me when I tell you about things that happen here on earth, how can you possibly, possibly believe if I tell you what's going on in heaven? For only I, the Son of Man, have come to earth and will return to heaven again. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so I, the Son of Man, must be lifted up on a pole, so that everyone who believes in me will have eternal life, because God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. And he goes on to try to explain to Nicodemus, which is what you probably remember, perhaps from the last time. So if that all sounds familiar, it should. It was um, March the 14th, to be exact. And at that time, we came into the middle of the conversation. Just tell me that you remember it. Humor me. <laughs> at that time, we came into the middle of the conversation, if you remember, and looked at the last part of that conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. Well, today we jump right into the conversation, right from the beginning. So we get to see what's going on at the beginning, and we look at the first part of that conversation. But not only that, we look at Nicodemus' progression of faith throughout the Gospel of John and throughout his life. Nicodemus, you'll remember, a Pharisee, a well-respected religious leader, knew all the right prayers, knew all the right rituals, right off the bat, we know that Jesus came, or that Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. Why? Why? Well, number one, it doesn't really say why, but I'm going to surmise that number one, he came to Jesus at night because he was a trusted religious Pharisee, a religious Jewish leader, and he probably should already know the, question, the answer to the question that he's about to ask. And, number two, he didn't want anybody to see him talking to Jesus. Right away, that jumped out at me. Right away, that first sentence. He came to Jesus at night so as not to be seen. Man, that hit me. I don't know about you. I think I'm just preaching to myself today. Y'all just sit and listen in. But that really, that really jumped out at me because how often do we maybe question our faith Maybe question what in the world, what am I supposed to be doing for you, oh God? What kind of, what, is, what direction am I supposed to be taking? Or maybe even, God, are you even there at all? Are you even, are you even present in my life in this situation? And, and how many times we question that, but we don't show those questions on the outside. Because we're good church people. We wait until nighttime. We wait until it's dark when we're alone, <laughs> to cry out to God and say, what in the world is happening here? Lord, help my unbelief. We wait until it's dark to say that. Or what about when our hearts have he are heavy? Because we've lost so much and so many people. And I, I just really was affected by the number of people that we have lost this year for whatever reason. And yet we come across as strong and resilient we're going to make our way, we're going to do what we need to do, and we're going to keep going on through. <sighs> now, Nicodemus was under pressure. He was a religious leader, for crying out loud. Someone people looked up to. Just like you and me. There are people who look up to us. We are people that others look up to because of our faith. That's true for every one of us. We are people whom other people look up to because of our wisdom. That's true for every one of us. Well, maybe everybody, maybe not me so much, but maybe the rest of you. Your family looks up to you. Your friends see you as a strong person. 
And yet those questions remain in our hearts. Nicodemus believed he was a good religious guy, just like you and me. But he needed proof. He needed signs, especially at those challenging times. How many of you have said, how many, how many times have I said, man, just if you could just show me a little bit what you want me to do, give me some sort of something to show me what you want me to do. And so he asks, what do you mean? What do you mean? How is this possible? One translation says, how is this possible? And he keeps asking that over and over again. How is this possible? Nicodemus was attracted to Jesus. He wanted to know Jesus, but he just couldn't understand. And he kept asking for clarification. What do you mean? What, that's like I do. What do you mean, God? What do you want? What do you want? Make it clear. Mm -mm -mm. Nicodemus, remember, had been a spectator to these miracles of Jesus. It said so. We've seen what you did. So he'd been the spectator to these miracles, and he wanted to know more. And I, 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 I picture Jesus a little bit exasperated when he goes, oh my gosh, you are a religious leader, and yet we got to go over this and over this and over this and over this. I feel like that's what God says to me. You're a church leader, and yet we got to go over this and over this and over this. If you don't believe things here on earth, how are you going to believe heavenly things? But the point is that Nicodemus had questions. He was an outlier, you see. While he still had, he was still a religious leader, but he still had questions. And not only that, he was willing to understand a different way. He was willing to hear another perspective. And here is a good example today for us in our world where it seems that no one is willing to listen to another perspective. No one is willing to hear another side of the story. We all think our way is the right way. I love this guy. Because he is me. He's, he's us. He has questions. And he comes to learn about the life that Jesus gives in his own way, in his own time. Right here at the beginning that you and I are looking at, it seems a little sneaky. You know, he's got to come at night, doesn't want anybody to know. That seems a little bit sneaky, full of doubt. But then he shows up two more times in the Gospel of John. And the next time we see him, somewhere in the middle, he argues that Jesus, at the very least, deserves consideration. Okay, so we've moved from help me here to, um, to believe to, okay, maybe we should consider Jesus a little bit. And then the third time we see him is in, in chapter 19, Right at the very end, where he and Joseph of Arimathea are there to take the body of Jesus when everybody else is gone. Out of the 19th chapter of John. So after Jesus had died, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus all along, again, here's his guy, He'd kind of been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders. Asked Pilate for permission to take the body of Jesus down from the cross. When Pilate gave him permission, he took the body away. Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night, was also there. Bringing about 75 pounds of embalming ointment. And together... They wrapped Jesus' body in a long linen cloth with spices, as is the Jewish custom of burial. It's those two, those two secret disciples who were there at the end to bury the body of Jesus. Early on, in the scripture that I read for you, Jesus tells Nicodemus that just like the wind, God's spirit blows where it will. And we don't know where it's going to come from, and we don't know where it's going to go. We don't know where that spirit's going to blow at us. We don't know whom God is going to touch with that spirit. We don't know when God is going to use us to touch someone else. There are some things you can't explain but only feel. So I leave you with a couple of questions. 
You and I, where has that spirit been evident to you? Where has that spirit of God blown where you have least expected it? Here's another question to think about. We watched Nicodemus' progression of life from beginning to where he comes to Jesus at night to he moves to the point where, well, maybe Jesus has got something here to the point where I'm going to bury my friend. How have you felt God closer to you as you have grown older? What has been your journey of faith? Where have you felt assurance? And I think this slow progression of Nicodemus is a great way to understand a journey of faith. Because it's our journey of faith. We can see our own development of faith in Nicodemus. At first we have questions, and then we slowly come to believe, and as we get older we go, mm, yeah. until we're finally all in. And we can say with confidence, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Some things to think about, friends, as we think about our own journey of faith. Let's pray about that. So God, again, we see this biblical character of Nicodemus, but more than that, we see ourselves. We see our world. Forgive us when we feel like we have to come to you at night. And yet, thank you for being there for us at night to hear our questions and our cries. Continue to mold us and shape us as people of faith so that as others look to us, your Holy Spirit can shine through us and make a difference in the life of someone else. We give you that thanks, and especially thanks for your word as we've heard it today. We pray in your name. Amen. And so we prepare ourselves, having heard that, and having thought about our journey of faith, we prepare ourselves to come around the table. It's our common theme. It's what brings us together. Remember last week, it's what connects us. And so we come to the table today. Today in the life of the church is called Trinity Sunday, where we think about Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit and what that means. It's complicated. And yet it all comes together around this table. God loving us enough to send Jesus to die for our sins and leaving us with the gift of the Holy Spirit that allows us to come to this table together and share. So I invite you to do that. Come and remember Jesus' life and death because he loved you so. Our song uh, for preparation for communion is O For a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Thank you.
As we come to this table this morning, you know that this is God's invitation, and so all are welcome at this table. Shall we pray? Gracious God, once again, we find ourselves at your table, not as strangers, but as your people. We bless now the loaf that is before us, a symbol of Christ's body that was whole and complete before it was broken on Calvary to make us whole. Bind us together as members of Christ's table so that we might represent him in a whole and complete way. As we drink the wine, a symbol of the blood that Jesus poured out to reconcile us to you, may we be reminded of the privilege that is ours to pour ourselves out in worship and work for you. Amen. On that night, he broke the bread and he blessed it and he gave it to all his disciples. And he said, eat of this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took a glass of wine and he said, this is a covenant in my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. Shall we share in this supper at this time together? house today. It's been good to be with you in worship. Uh, also, always, as we do, if you want to stay and pray with us afterwards, you're welcome to do that. We'll, we'll do that like we usually do. Uh, but you have a couple of beautiful days ahead of us, so I hope you get out and enjoy it and appreciate God's wonderful creation. Take some good, big, deep breaths out there. Remember those you love and those that have gone before and celebrate the next couple of days together. 
I invite you to stand as we sing our closing song. It is This Little Light of Mine, followed by the benediction and then our prayer time together. Let's stand. Seeking opportunities for justice and for peace. Amen. Amen.